what's up YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, aka Gamer55551. And I am back with a My Two Cent video for this week where I take a look at some of the stories that caught my opinion and that caught my attention and give you my thoughts and my opinion about them. Um, so why don't we get started with the first one. And this one I got a request on Facebook by by someone after I posted my last My Two Cent and this one we wanted to talk about Teletales games though. I'm sure most of you are aware of the whole situation with Teletales though um, recently they had they basically closed up shop and all that stuff and apparently there seems to be a lot of controversy going around it though. So we'll start off with the first one. It was reported though by, by Fortune Magazine and other sites it was reported that um, Teletale Games posted a comment on their Twitter page that said, quote, and this it's worth pointing out the story came out September 22nd. Today, Teletale Games made a difficult decision to begin a major studio closure following a year marked by insurmountable challenge. A majority of the company's employees were dismissed earlier this morning with a small group of 25 employees staying on to fulfill the company's obligation to its boards and partners. CEO um, Pete Hockley issued the following statement. It's been a credible difficult year for Teletale Games as we work to set the company on a new course. Unfortunately, we ran out of time trying to get there. We released some of our best content this year and received a tremendous amount of positive feedback, but ultimately that did not translate to sales with a heavy heart we watch our friends leave today to spread our brand of storytelling across the gaming industry telltales will issue a further comment regarding its product portfolio in the coming weeks though well it turns out to be that some of those employees were not happy exactly with um telltale games exactly from an article posted on ign.com on september 25th it claimed that Telltales violated the Warren Act. Uh, according to according to the article, it says a former Telltale game employee is filing a class action lawsuit against his former employees for reportedly breaking California labor law in an attempt to properly compensate himself and the rest of its former employees that were laid off last Friday. Um, as reported by Polygon, um, the former employees. Uh, submit the class action lawsuit on Monday citing Teletale's violations of the WARN, Workers Adjustment and Retraining Notification Act for just cause of the lawsuit. According to the lawsuit, this violation should be grant, um, oh, well, gr grant the former employee um, and other terminated employees a collection of unpaid wedges and benefits for 60 days following the violation. According to the California Employment Development Department website, the Warren Act protects employees, their families, and communities by requiring that employees get give a 60-day notice to the affected employees prior to a plant closing or mass layoff. As this class action lawsuit, Robert will be acting as oh, I'm sorry, that's the person's name. I should have mentioned that name. I apologize. For that Robert will be acting as a plaintiff on behalf of himself and the rest of the Teletale employees that were laid off last Friday. Um, which, according to the lawsuit, was approximately 275 employees. Um, the lawsuit claims that this number constitute a massive layoff and that without being given at least 60 days prior to written notice of their termination without causes, Teletales is required to pay them for their respective wages, commission, and bonuses, acute holiday pay, failed pension, and 401k contribution, other employee benefits under the ERISA, Employees Retirement Income Security Act and pay their medical expenses for 60 days following the massive layoff. Earlier reports suggested that Teletel's employees were caught off guard when they were told the majority of the staff were being let go and had a 30 minutes to leave the building. Because of this proper violation of the Warren Act, Robert, on behalf of the rest of the laid off employees, demand a trial by jury to determine if they are owned the various payments and benefits that would have received for 60 days following um, termination. IGN has reached out to Telltale's game and will update um, update any comments. Um, the initial report that Telltale's will be sh shutting down has been followed by numerous developments, including the studio actively trying to find a way to finish The Walking Dead final season. Um, 
Um, one of the actors on The Walking Dead um, commented on the Telltale closure, and the studio closure was reported by a result of a fail round of financing, though. Um, you know, it's unfortunate when a studio closed to be exact, though, and it's really, it really is sad when that happens. That said, I'm, I am someone who is a, you know, who is pro-consumer, who, you know, is pro-union as well, although to a certain degree, depending on what the position of the union is to be exact. And if employees are being screwed over, then they have a right to speak out. And if what this employee, Robert, is saying is true, though, then yeah, I would side with him. If they got screwed over by Teletel Games, and if they violated the Warren, the Warren Act that was passed, the Warren Act though, then yeah. I think they should go through with it. It's very, it gives the impression that the it, get, it gives to me it gives the impression that upper management was basically screwing their employees over though, and that really is unfortunate if that turns out to be true. It's very sad that Teletel Games is closing, and what makes it even more sadder is this whole situation that has spun out because of this though, and. It, it really is. I mean, Telltale Games, while not, ev I, while not every game is great from Telltale Games, they have produced some good games that have g garnished a lot of attention, from like The Walking Dead to basically Tales from Borderlands, and of course the Back to the Future one as well. And to see them close and then to see this happen is very unfortunate though. Um, if, what this, if what the employee is saying is correct though, I hope they do win this case, though. I do hope that they are successful in this. I think it's very unfortunate if if these allegations are true that the management basically did not warn the employees that they were going to be let go or anything. And if they violated the law, then yeah, they should be punished for their actions. So, so overall, unfortunate that Teletales is shutting down. And if these allegations are true, to be say, I hope the former employees win this lawsuit to be exact. So I'm ruining, I'm hoping it, I'm hoping they do win though. But overall, very sad day for what happened to Teletales. Okay, uh, we're gonna take a quick break and when we get back, we're gonna get to part two of our video. And this one has to do with the announcement of two Soul, Sword Art Online games that are, are coming to the Nintendo Switch. Mostly ports to be exact, but still they're coming to the switch so we'll take a quick break and we will be right back okay and we are back with part two of our my two cent video and for this one we're going to be taking a look at the announcement that two sword art online games will be coming to the nintendo switch um, Sword of Art Online, um, it's one of the animes, I've, I have watched a little bit of it, I haven't gotten back into it yet, I need to, re recently need to, hopefully it's still on either Hulu or Netflix or Amazon is the video, but, um, it's become pretty much a mainstream anime, has become mostly a mainstream anime, in a way similar to how Dragon Ball Z has been, has been, even though I'm not really a big Dragon Ball Z fan, I, I don't, won't deny the fact that there is certainly an audience is. And also another one that's been recently been gaining mainstream attention, um, My Hero Academy. If or if I'm saying the name correctly, I apologize if I'm not though. And of course, Sword Online, Sword Art Online as well. Now, recently, Sword up to this point, Sword Art Online games have mostly been released on the PS4, the Vita. I think some have come to the Steam as well. I think the last one, Fatal Bullet, was released on both the Xbox One and the PS4, and there was talks about the possibility of it coming to the Nintendo Switch. Well, during the Tokyo Game Show 2018 though, it was announced that two Sword Art, Art Online games are coming to the Nintendo Switch. Uh, according, to, um, according to Nintendo Life, again, all, all links will be in the description, it points out, quote, the popular Sword Art Online series is heading to the Nintendo Switch. During a stage event at the 2018 Tokyo Game Show, Bandai Namco has announced um, Sword Art Online Hollow Realization and Sword Art Online uh, Fatal Bullet will both be arriving 
Ivan on the Switch at some point in the future. According to um, Game Usta, G E M A T S U, if I'm not saying the name correctly, I apologize about that. The first is a deluxe edition, and the second one is a complete edition previously announced for existing platforms. Bandai America has also confirmed um, the Western release for both games via YouTube anniversary trailer. And according to, I believe, the Anime News Network, um, this announcement came also, um, also, uh, it, was, it was also came with the announcement that Fatal, Fatal, Fatal Bullet game is also getting new expansion content title, Dissidents of the Nexus, um, and the expansion content will also be included in the complete edition version of the game. Bandai Namco Entertainment also revealed that on Saturday that that the Sword Art Online Long Song game will be released on Steam, though. Um, so for me, though, um, this is nice. I mean, it certainly is nice that these games are coming to Nintendo. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry about that. Nintendo Switch, though. I remember playing a little bit of Halo Realization, if I'm saying the name correctly, on the PS4 for the bit. It was a fun game, though. Not perfect, but fun. And I also tried it out on the Vita as well. Again, again, not perfect or anything like that, but the gameplay did kind of remind me a little bit of the Xenoblade Chronicles series. So it is nice that Bandai Namco is upping their support for the Nintendo Switch, and I'm glad that this game is coming over, along with several other games that, that they're bringing over as well. I think we know that Dragon Ball Z Fighter is coming to the Nintendo Switch. Um, I think we know that that My Hero Academy, again, apologize if I'm not if I'm not saying the name correctly, is also coming to the Nintendo Switch as well. So they, Bandai Namco, really is, seems to be pushing their support for the Nintendo for the Nintendo Switch, and I certainly think that's a good thing. The one question that still remains, and I'm not 100% sure about it, and and I've been trying to find some information, I have yet to found some yet, is that if since it's coming to the West, will we get a physical copy in the West? We know that Japan will probably get well, is getting a physical copy as they have announced and they showed off, I think, some pictures of it though. The question is, will the West see a physical copy? Will they release the game over here in the West like they did with games like Dragon Ball Z Xenoverse um, or, and the upcoming Tales game? Or are we going to see it as only available on the Nintendo eShop, very similar to, say, how One Piece Warriors 3 was or, and, of course, One Piece, um, One Piece um, Unlimited Red as well? I mean, or like what Capcom's doing with Oni Mushu and what they did with Okami as well. So, although although I made the option to basically import the game through courtesy of Play Asia as well. So, that's probably the big question that remains, though. Um, hopefully, um, hopefully we'll get some clarification as well. So, I'm hoping for a physical copy. It if. if if that is true though so or maybe until i find out more information but overall putting the physical whether a physical copy or not is going to be in the west though i'm glad that sword arts online th those two ps4 ports are coming to the nintendo switch um if they ever do another sword arts online game which chances are they probably will hopefully that they'll release it <clears throat> excuse me hopefully they'll release it around the same time as they release the ps4 the xbox one and the PC as Steam as well. So overall, great that it's coming over. Um, here's to hoping we see more Bandai and Namco support. Maybe they could, hope maybe they could try to actually bring that Soul Calibur game that a lot of people would like, or I will not say a lot of people, but a lot of Switch owners would like to see come to the Nintendo Switch. <clears throat> okay, uh, we're gonna take a quick break, and when we get back. We're going to get to part three of our video, and this one has to regarding with Capcom, which has both good news and bad news regarding um, two games, to be exact. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part three of our My Two Cent video for this week. And for this week, there, we got 
two games that, or at least one game that was announced and one that just sparked a bit of controversy that might have upset some people. How big of an impact this will have on it when the game comes out remains to be seen. So we'll start off with the first one. And the first one is the announcement that the first three Phoenix Wrights games are being re-released. And it's not only coming to the Nintendo Switch, but it's also been announced it'll be coming to Xbox One, PS4, and PC slash Steam. Um, from an article posted on comicbook.com, Com, it writes, Capcom has officially announced that the Phoenix Rice Ace Attorney Trilogy is coming to the Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, PS4, and PC early next year during this year's Tokyo Game Show event. The trilogy first made its grand debut on the Nintendo 3DS, or back, wait, handheld, back in 2014. Actually, I think that was the original Nintendo DS. I think it was back in 2005, and that was a port of a Game Boy Advance game that was released only in Japan, and instantly became a huge hit for the Objection Lawyer and his crew. The trilogy includes Phoenix Wright's Ace Attorney, Phoenix Wright's Ace Attorney Justice for All, and Phoenix Wright's Ace Attorney Trials and tri tri Tribulation, if I'm saying that name correctly. Um, the upcoming release will feature both Japanese and English language support as um, as well as an overhaul audio and visual tweak to make the game more modern to go along their platform and release. Even better, more save slot. We don't have an official release date this time, unfortunately, other than a vague early 2019, but, 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 they, also, but we do, they do have this trailer to show it, um, show it off as well. Um, Honestly, I think that's good, though. I mean, the Phoenix Wright series is a very interesting series. It plays more like a point-and-click kind of adventure, but it's it's been on more of the silly side. Um, some of it is just so it's sort of a courtroom drama, but a little silly and all. It's, some of it is a bit absurd, but it is enjoyable, though. I remember playing the first three back when it came out on the Nintendo DS, and they were fun games, fun point-and-click kind of adventures games though although it's going to be curious to see how some of these are going to work considering some of the features or some of the cases required um the use of the touch screen although you could you don't you didn't have to use the touch screen you could always use the button command though so it will be interesting to see how these cases play out how this game plays out and if it does well especially on the ps4 xbox one switch and pc maybe they'll maybe they'll port over that apollo justice one that was released on the ds um the two that were two phoenix wright games that were released on the nintendo 3ds i think some of them were just downloadables only and last but not although i do think there were physical releases as well and last but certainly not least maybe they could port over that miles edwards one that was released on the Nintendo DS, including a sequel that never saw the light of day over here in the West. So great that um, Apollo, great that Phoenix Wright is coming to not only the Switch but to the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Hopefully, those who own an Xbox One, PS4, and the PC and Steam will enjoy it as much as much as us Nintendo fans did when it came out originally on the Nintendo DS. The other story I want to talk about is Devil May Cry, Devil May Cry 5, and a bit of a controversy that has emerged recently. And this has to do with the fact that microtransactions were recently discovered inside um, a Devil May Cry during, the, I think, the presentation of Devil May Cry 5. I think during the Tokyo Game Show. The article was first reported on, oh, let me get it up, on GameStop, and it recently pointed out though that. We recently had an opportunity to play Devil May Cry 5 at the TGS. The demo showed behind closed doors featured Dante, the original star of the series who is now considered a secondary character to Neo in the new sequel. During our demo, we encountered the Divine Statue, which acts as a shop where you can trade orbs collected during combat and exploration. And in the menu, we discover that players will have the option to spend real money to cure or get more orbs if they wish to expand the upgrade process and beef up Dante earlier than usual. Um, speaking to the director of Devil May Cry 5, um, speaking to Hideki, 
it's Itsu, if I'm saying they correctly, director of the game from Capcom, we asked why this system is necessary in a game like Devil May Cry 5. And the reason given was a familiar one. It's about giving players option to play the game as they wish. With giving players, with giving people the ability to purchase red orbs, it's something we want to give people as an option. If they want to save time and just want to get all the stuff at once, those people can do that. But on the other hand, I don't feel you have to get all the moves. Um, you should be able to play it the way you want to play it. Um, it was a bit surprised to discover that such a feature exists in Devil May Cry 5, but it's not the first game in the series. Um, um, in, in the series to feature this. This was also part of Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition. Um, they were asked how the presence of microtransactions will impact the learning process of playing in the next Devil May Cry. Next Devil May Cry, as our experience with these types of action games have taught us gradually unlocking and learning new abilities, is far, far more natural, far more natural means of developing new skills and earning high performance in battle. Um, I think he says, quote, it's interesting because from a game designer's point of view, there's two different things we think when we set to set the price of the moves, skills, and abilities, which can be purchased with red orbs, he explains. Um, the first thing is stuff that we feel people should want to get first is made cheap. So people will think, oh, this is cheap, so I'll just going to buy this. But then for the stuff that's going to be harder to use and master, we made made that more expensive partially because of you saving up for that you're not going to be able to buy as many skills so you're going to have going to have the time to learn it so you have to make the decision between going for the cheaper stuff or saving up getting things that have a lot of uh, ap application but you have to spend time learning and perfecting well the comment didn't exactly sit well with Everybody to be exact. In fact, according to an article on Game Radar, um, Devil May Cry fans it points out that Devil May Cry fans are kind of divided on this, at least on Reddit to be exact. Um, there, there has been, there has been some debate about this. It says, "quote, um, oh, it says that." It says that Devil May Cry Five will feature microtransactions, allowing players to use allowing players to pay real-life money for red orbs, the in-game currency since the series beginning to purchase upgrades ability. There have been defense from Capcom that the game is still balanced and that and that it's about to offer player choices, but the fact of the matter is the addition of this business model represents a significant change in the series and a, as a specific change are, are won't to do, it's got the Devil May Cry community talking. Well, debating really over at the Devil May Cry. Um, this is all off of Reddit, though. There's been talks about some people. Some people are planning to boycott the game over the inclusion of microtransactions, while 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 others are totally fine with it. This by itself isn't isn't particularly unexpected. Microtransactions have been a continuous item for years, which staunch defenders as well as those seeking to end the practice they consider. Man manipulated and sleazy and just to let you know um according to according to wccf tech um the producer um uh, one of the producers at capcom matt walker confirmed on the matter on his twitter profile um he says quote and this was posted on september 23rd i appreciate your kind words but i'm sorry you feel that I am bullshitting people. It's understandable that people are concerned over microtransactions with what's been seen with loot boxes in other games. He then adds, quote, um, if anyone's on the fence, I suggest, suggest trying or asking someone who played Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition to help evaluate whether the game was balanced poorly. Now, I'm very much mixed on this for several reasons, though, all right? Um, for the record, I have played Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition on the PS4, and I didn't notice that there were microtransactions in the games, and I, and not, and I, and even if I did, I never really touched them, and so far, it hasn't ruined the experience of when I played that game, though. Having said that, though, I understand why people are upset about it. And remember, Devil May Cry 4 
um, on the PS3 and the special edition that was released on the PS4 and also Xbox One as well. That came out before Star Wars Battlefront 2 debacle happened. And we're living in a post Star Wars Battlefront 2 debacle where the, even the thought of microtransactions or loot boxes in general is a negative stigma, right? As, as of this moment. And I can understand why people are upset about this though. I don't like the idea of them putting microtransactions in this game, though. Excuse me. Okay. I'm not a big fan of it, though. Though, and but at the same time, it's give, it's unclear whether or not Capcom will take the route of what EA did with Star Wars Battlefront 2. Although, if they're smart, they would look at what they did wrong and decide, yeah, we're not going to do that, though. As far as how big of an impact this will have when the game comes out next year, um, remains to be seen at this time. It may impact the sales of the game, it may not impact the sales at all, but I, it's, it, it, I'm very mixed on this. And the whole player choice option, that's not going to sit well with, every, with everybody, as we saw that excuse before many times, and how easily some developers have gotten greedy with the microtransaction. So overall on this one though, I'm mixed about this. I don't like the idea of microtransactions. I'm not a big fan of it, especially in a $60 game. But as long as they don't, as long as Capcom doesn't abuse it or turn the game into a pay to win kind of situation or create a situation that is forcing people to use microtransaction, um, I'll tolerate it. Doesn't mean I agree with it. Doesn't mean I support it, but if Capcom gets too greedy, though, that they could have a backlash in their hands in the same way as we saw with Star Wars Battlefront 2. So I understand people are, I understand there are some that are upset about it. I don't blame them if they want to boycott this game over this decision to use microtransaction, though. For me, like I said, I don't like it, but as long as they don't get too greedy or turn into the pay it to win kind of situation. It's something I'll somewhat tolerate. Doesn't mean I'm embracing it with open arms, but either way, it's gonna be really interesting when this game comes out to see if this controversy still sticks when it comes out or if it fades out. And if it does stick, it'll be really interesting to see how big of an impact this will have sales wise on Devil May Cry 5. <clears throat> Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we're going to get to part four of our video, and this one has to do with something that Nintendo and Bethesda did that I think that I believe was very um, noble of them to do. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part four of our My Two Cent video for this week. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at something that Nintendo and Bethesda did that I thought was a very honorable slash noble thing for them to do. So we'll start off with the first one, and this one has to do with Bethesda before we get to the Nintendo one, though. And this has to do with an article from Eurogamer saying that, quote, Bethesda helps 12-year-old boy with rare cancer fulfill his wish of playing Fallout 76. Um, it says, quote, Bethesda helped a 12-year-old boy with a rare form of cancer fulfilling his wish of playing Fallout 76. Wes from Hampton Road, Virginia had battled stage 4 um, neuroblastoma, N-E-U-R-O-B-L-A-S-T, OMA, apologize if I'm not saying the name, for half of his life after being diagnosed at just five years old. Just day, days after doctors told West family though that it's best to stop his treatment, he realized he probably won't get to play Fallout 76 due out in November. In a Facebook post, West's parents um, reveal Matt Grandstaff, Matt Grandstaff, the assistant director at Bethesda, drove four hours from the company's headquarters in Maryland to the family's home with not just a copy of a game, but a prototype of the power armor helmet due to due to come with the power armor edition of the game, signed by Bethesda Games Studio Chief Todd Howard. While he doesn't get to keep the game because it's too early, just those hours of 
it, it's a very touching story. So just those hours of playtime made him happier than you know. Read the Facebook post though. Um, as your game reported in July, every ever so often, Bethesda Game Studios, maker of the Elder Scrolls and Fallout games, opened its doors to terminally ill children who wish to see their favorite games are made. It's part of the company's quiet, ongoing support of Bake a Wish Foundation. We have we have had a lot of them wish to come to our studio, Todd Howard told Jeff Kegley. If I'm saying the name incorrectly, then I apologize. In an on-stage game lab interview, that's good. You want you want a reality check at work. You're doing your day to day, and then a family comes with their child. They can wish for anything, and they come to your studio because they want to see how you make their favorite games, and and they want to play it. It's by far the um, greatest it's greatest thing that we do, though. Um, we don't we don't talk a lot about it. He says I am I am now, but it's a very private thing. The one takeaway is the family because they always come with their families. They think it's just fun that this is what my child wants to do. But then, but then they see this opportunity of hundreds of people and what they're doing and how passionate we are, and they leave with this new connect, connection with their with their child. And it is it and it is it's a serious magical. It's the greatest things um, we do. In the case, though, you know, with Rest too ill to travel to Bethesda Game Studio, um, the studio made an effort to travel to Wes. Well done, and all. Um, and as far and, and and of course with Nintendo, they recently allow a terminal cancer patient to try out Super Smash Brothers Ultimate early, um, according. According to the article from The Verge, um, it says Chris Taylor, like any like any Nintendo fan, is hyped to see Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. It is shaping up to be a mashup fighting of epic proportion. But unlike most of us, the 20-year-old is not sure he'll live long enough to see the Switch game on store shelf. Taylor has terminal cancer and has been given months to live, so his friends started a social media campaign to get Nintendo's attention. Over the last week, Smash Brothers fans on Twitter and Reddit have lobbied Nintendo to let Taylor play Ultimate before he pass. These posts have gotten thousands of signature boosts from fans that were touched by Taylor's situation. Um, I am a little worried that Smash be out of, out of reach for my lifespan, though, and that the Meg and that Mega sucks. If I'm being real with you, Taylor wrote on Twitter on September 12th. The next day. Um, next day, Taylor continued his thoughts by saying, December is a long way away for someone who's already bedridden. Be bedridden. I know it's childish to despair over a video game, but Smash means a lot to me. And when Ultimate looks so good, it breaks my heart. Sorry to be sad on, on, on main during hype time, but hearing things like Smash and Devil May Cry 5 is starting to become painful to listen. It reminds me I won't be able to play these games. I've been waiting for years for only for a random chance, um, really chance to kill me slowly as soon as they are announced, though. Um, okay, let's see what else. Okay. It, right. um, it seems that Nintendo took Taylor's story to heart earlier today. Um, it's worth pointing out this article came out on September 21st. Um, the Smash Brothers fans shared an image of him playing the E3 demo of Super Smash Brothers Ultimate with friends and family following a visit from the Nintendo representative. Taylor and Nintendo did not mean to respond to requests for comment. Um, on Twitter, Taylor said he was happy to partake in the new newcomer's hype. Um, it said, quote, we did it. Today, two Nintendo reps came down with the E3 demo of Smash Ultimate, and I got to play it for three hours with a local friend, my brother and my mom. I got pictures incoming, but still, like, holy shit. <laughs> thanks, for every, thanks for everyone who did this for me. You're all real, real champs. And it shows some pictures of him playing the game and all. Unfortunately, though, as positive as this story is, though... It unfortunately ended on a bad note, as it turns out, the, it turns out that he, on uh, three days ago, he passed away. Um, according to Nintendo Soup, they're reporting that quote, quote, 
Today we have received the unfortunate news that Chris Taylor has passed away due to cancer. A few days before he passed away, Taylor shared some, some photos of him playing the game with his friends. We would like to send our heart, heartfelt condolences to Taylor's family and friends, and we also like to thank Nintendo of America for helping out fulfill Taylor's uh, final wishes, though. It's a very teary story, to be exact, though. Um, I have to say is this. While there are legitimate criticism that Nintendo does get, and there are legitimate ones, same with Bethesda as well, I have to say this was a very honorable and noble thing for them to do. To have the folks who are battling with with cancer and the fact that they may not be able to live, but able to g get a chance to play a game that chances are they may not be able to play is a very, very good thing, though. I have a lot of respect for what Nintendo did, and also with Bethesda. This was a very, very noble thing, and it shows that no matter how cruel the world can be sometimes, it's nice to know that there are certainly nice people out there that will help you out, help, that will be able to help people out in a way. And I think this was a very good thing that Bethesda and Nintendo did. So all I have to say is hats off to you guys though. And I would like to say, rest in peace, Chris Taylor though. Rest in peace, Chris Taylor. For that, I hold my controller, my Switch, my Switch Pro controller up in the heavens in your name and your honor as well though. So overall, very noble thing that Nintendo and Bethesda did. I think that's a really, really good thing. <clears throat> okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we're going to be talking about a story I talked about last week, which was about the rumors about the possibility that Sympathy of the Night might be getting a port, which turns out to be true, with a few caveats that might not sit well, that might not well, let's just say PS, say Switch, Xbox One, and PC owners may not be happy with this news. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part five of our My Two Cent video for this week. And for this one, we're going to be talking about the announcement that a Castlevania pack of both Sympathy of the Night and Rodado of Blood are that are coming to the PS4. Now, last week though, and this was reported last, I also reported this last week as well, it appeared though that Castlevania Sympathy of the Night and Rodado of Blood appeared on a Korea rating board that gave the impression that we were going to see these games, see a port of those games coming over to the PS4 though. It was later picked up by, it was also later reported that the ESRB reported a rating for those games as well. And this week though, we now got the official announcement that under the name, um, if I'm saying, if I can say the name correctly though, um, yep, that Castlevania Sympathy of the Night and Rodano of Blood will be coming to the PS4 on October 26th on tw October 26th, which supposedly will be around the same time as the second season of the Castlevania series on Netflix, which if you haven't seen the f season one though, it's worth checking out. I really enjoyed season one though. I'm looking forward to season two. And as a side note though, I also recommend checking out Disenchantment as well on Netflix. That's also a good series as well. It's like Futurama only replaced the futuristic setting with a medieval setting to be exact. So anyway, according to a according to the PlayStation blog, it they are reported that quote, yes, PlayStation blog readers, it's true. You've been asking us, and we've listened. Castlevania Requiem requirement or R E Q U I E M, Sympathy of the Night and Rodondo of Blood is coming exclusively to the PlayStation 4 via digital download on. October 26, 2018. That's only one month from today. As you might guess, um, the game, th this thing will be bundled to get together two classic Castlevania games, Redondo of Blood and Sympathy of the Night. Both games are closely related by characters and plot, focusing on the story of a vampire hunter, Richard Belmont, and Dracula's son, Alucard. 
respectively. Originally released as a Japan as a Japanese exclusive in 1993, Redondo of Blood is known as one of the best side-scrolling action games of its time, picking up plenty of praises from level designs and reward difficulties, both of which still stand the test of time, just in case you're wondering. Um, on the subject, Sympathy of the Night is quite simply one of the best games ever made. Uh, that's, uh, don't take our words for it, the person's writing the article though. The critical praise received at the time of its release and its plotted it's continued to receive speak volume about its quality. Quality. Check any greatest games all t of of all time list, and you'll find Sympathy of the Night up there. A sequel to Redondo of Blood, Sympathy follows a similar format for its predecessors, but expands on on things with the introduction of an RPG element and some mind blowing um, genius level designs. They don't say it's the fact that this game fo it follows sort of the Metroid point. Metroid formula, hence gave birth to the whole Metroidvania, Metroidvania um, genre though. Both games are originally emulated for the PS4 with several updates that take advantage of the new hardware. This includes 4K 1080p upscaling, multiple high resolution background, different rendering options such as smoothing and full trophy support. Word of warning though, the plat that Platinum will be tough to get. That's Elsewhere, um, as, as, elsewhere, the bundle will make use of the DualShock 4 vi vibration, analog stick, and speaker. With the latter meaning, you'll hear cool little chimes when you pick up an item. Though um, they also said that you can pre-order, um, you can also pre-order it through the PlayStation Store. As far as it, its exclusive exclusivity goes, um, according to GameStop, they are reporting. That they are reporting, according to what they're saying, though, GameStop asked Konami about Castlevania exclusivity, this this game exclusive, exclusivity, and whether it, at certain period and and whether it was for a certain period. In a statement, a representative for the company said that, and I quote, "As it stands, there are no plans to bring um, Requiem, R E Q U I E M, to other platforms. Um, it is a PS4 exclusive, though." Um, honestly, I'm glad that these games are being revived and getting another chance for a new generation of audiences, though. As I said before, though, Sympathy of the Night is one of my favorite entries in the Castlevania series. It's also a series that gave birth to the genre, or the term, Metroidvania, though. And it still is a game I would still enjoy even today, even though I've played it countless and countless times to be exact, though. Um, I never got a chance to try out Rodado of Blood. That is definitely one I'm willing to try out myself, being that this is being that this game basically came out before Sympathy of the Night did though. Um, while some may be disappointed to hear that it is um, basically an exclusive for the PS4 though, I'm not losing sleep over it though. What I don't know for certain, and I, I'm not 100% sure about this, is what, what kind of exclusivity is it? Is it a time exclusivity in the way Crash Bandicoot and Saint Trilogy was, where that was released on the PS4 first, and then next, and then a year later it was released on Switch, Xbox One, and PC? Or is it the kind of exclusivity in the same level of of what Bayonetta 2 was, where in this case Nintendo was willing to fully fund the game to make it basically exclusive for their system. If Sony fully funded this game entirely, if that turns out to be true though, then then I can see how this is an exclusive that can only be found on the PS4. Some people may not like that to be exact though, but you know what? If, if Sony was willing to put the money out, if they are ones that are willing to fund to make this happen, then yeah, they're, they're, it's going to be on their system. However, if it turns out it's a time exclusive in the end though, then it will be interesting to see if people are going to be still buying it for the PS4 or wait to see it pop up on PC or possibly Xbox One or Switch as well. So overall though, while the exclusivity part might not appeal to everybody though, I'm glad these two games are getting another chance. 
I'm definitely looking forward to trying them out myself, particularly Sympathies of the Night. As I said, my favorite Castlevania game of all time as well. So, and the fact that it's coming out around when season two of Castlevania on Netflix is happening. So that's definitely a plus. So overall, great that these games are coming over. Still wish there was a physical copy for them. That would have been nice, but eh, it's great that it's coming on the PlayStation Store though. And the exclusivity, doesn't bother me as much. It might bother some, but for me, it doesn't. Okay, um, we're gonna take a quick break, and when we get back, we're gonna get to part six, where this one we're gonna be talking about um, Sony making a complete reversal in terms of regards of crossplay. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with our six, if I'm doing this correctly, yes, six and final part of our My Two Cent video for this week. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at Sony doing a complete reversal with regarding the use of crossplay. Now, for those who are not familiar, um, around around the time of E3, um, it was announced that Fortnite was coming to the Nintendo Switch, and to the excitement of, of several people, excitement to some to be exact. But it was later discovered though that for those who sign into their Fortnite account with the PS4, it apparently you could not, you could not sign, if you sign in with that one, you cannot use your account on your PS4 to your account on either the PC, Xbox One, or the Nintendo Switch. You would have to create a whole new separate account though. And this sort of upset at some people and Sony gave some response which still did not exactly sit very well with a lot of people. And honestly, and from this person's perspective though, as much as I like the PS4, this was an idiotic decision on Sony's part. I mean, if a developer wants to make a game that supports cross-platform, I believe they should have a right to do so. I'm not saying all games should... I'm not saying every game has to have cross-platforms. That's up to the developers to decide if they want to add that or not. But I do think it was a dumb policy for Sony to not allow developers the option if they want to offer cross-platform. It got so far as to even Bethesda um, threatening in a way in terms of ending, I think, some support for, the, for Sony's platform if they didn't add cross-platform. Although... As of right now, from what I understand, they currently have no plans to make Fallout 76 um, cross-platform, even after this recent announcement from Sony, to be exact. So what announcement am I referring to? Well, according to, according to The Verge, and also reported on their blog as well, um, it is reported that, according to that, but according to what PlayStation Blog is saying, it says, quote, um, Following Comprehensive Evaluation Process, SIE, Sony Interactive Entertainment, has identified a path toward supporting cross-platform feature for selected third-party content. We recognize that PS4 players have been eagerly awaiting an update, and we appreciate the community continued patience as we have navigated through this issue to find a solution. The first step will be an open beta beginning today for Fortnite that will allow for cross-platform for cross-platform gameplay progression and comp gaming and progression across PS4, Android, ISO, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, Microsoft Windows, and Mac operating system. We see the beta as an opportunity to conduct throughout testing to ensure cross-platform play is best on PlayStation, while being mindful about the user's experience from both a technical and social perspective. Um, and according to the Verge, they're saying, quote, that they're saying the same thing as well. It says Epic Games has recently pointed out that, quote, Epic has said that it's working on a solution for those players who ended up creating a second account to get around the previous cross crossplay restriction. The solution should be available soon. For players who created an extra account to play Fortnite on multiple console platform, we're working on two things. The developer wrote on Twitter, one, an account merger feature to combine Battle Royale purchases coming in November 2nd, I mean, not November 2nd, coming in November, two, enable unlinking a console from one Fortnite 
account and relink it to another Fortnite account um, coming in a few days. Um, the policy change is, is a major is a major according to Kodaru, uh, K O D E R A, and Sony is now working towards fully supporting crossplay in Fortnite. Sony is opening in beta today and testing crossplay support and says looking to open up its platform in the future. The, this move could signal a more support for crossplay in on the PS4. And either way, it's a major change for PC, PS4, and Xbox users to, users to be able to play games against each others against each other. Honestly, for me though, I think this is a good thing, and I'm glad Sony made made the change to their decision on this one. I think it was ridiculous that they had a restriction on this though. And I think that the fact that they are now opening up, at least on Fortnite though, this is definitely a good thing. Whether or not that means other games that could that want to support cross-platform, like say, I think maybe Rocket League. Um, I don't think that has cross-platform on the PS4, Rocket League, or Fallout 76, if Bethesda changed their mind, or other games out there remains to be seen. But I think this is definitely a good thing, and I applaud the fact that Sony is opening up on this though. Um, whether or not they'll enable this feature when the PS5 comes out, who knows to be exact. But I think at this point, I think cross-platform, I think, and cross-play is going to be sort of the new norm at this point. And I think it would be idiotic for the three developers, that's the three console manufacturers, Sony, Nintendo, and Microsoft, to not able cross-platform on their system is utterly ridiculous. I think this is some this is a feature that I think should be part of their system as well. I'm not saying every developer is going to have their game is going to have cross platform, but I think the <clears throat> excuse me though. Oops. I think the option should be available for them. And if they want to make their system if they want to make their game have cross play on it they should allow to do they should be allowed to do that though so overall i'm very happy that sony um changed their stance on this though hopefully that means we'll see more cross play games on the ps4 and when the ps5 eventually comes out um come down come come out in the near future okay again not every game is going to use cross play and don't expect to see any first party games from sony use cross play though but Hopefully this will open the door for more third-party developers that want to put cross-play in their games, especially if they're bringing their games to the PS4. <clears throat> okay, um, this concludes this My True Set video for this week. And again, these are my opinion, but what are yours? What are your whole thoughts with the whole situation with Telltales, though? Um, are you disappointed that the studio is closed down? Do you think the whole story of how they treated their their employees is unacceptable and so forth. What are your thoughts about the announcement that the two Sword Art Online games are coming to the Nintendo Switch though? Are you happy that they bring these games over? Um, did you enjoy these games on either the PS4 or, or on the Xbox One or PC when they came out? And do you think that they're worth bringing over to the Switch? Do you not support think they're worth bringing over to the Switch? And do you think we'll see a physical copy for the Nintendo Switch? What are your thoughts about the announcement of the Phoenix Wright trilogy coming to not only the Switch, but PS4, Xbox One, and PC as well? Are you pleased that they're finally bringing those games over? Are they the kind of game that interests you in any way? And what about the possible controversy sur surrounding um, Devil May Cry 5 with the microtransaction. Do you think it is a big deal? Do you think people are, or do you think people are blowing it way out of proportion? Um, what are your thoughts about what Nintendo and Bethesda did in terms of with these cancer patients by letting them try out these games before they are released out in the market though? Do you think this is a very noble thing to do? Um, do you think this is an honorable thing to do to be exact? Uh, what are your thoughts about the two Castlevania games coming to exclusively to the PS4? Uh, Sympathy of the Night and Rondo, Rondo of Blood. Do you think this is great that they, that they are bringing them over? Do you think that they've released... Or do you think that 
it's they've released so many versions of it it's like why are we releasing it again to be exact though are you disappointed that it's exclusively to the ps4 or are you not disappointed at all about it and what are your thoughts about ps sony finally opening up crossplay on the ps4 though do you think this is the right thing for them to do do you think it's better late than never do you or do you think that crossplay really wasn't a big deal and you think this was just dumb for them to open up crossplay at all do you agree with what I said in this video? Do you disagree? Do you have a difference of opinion? Um, as always, sound off on the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And I hope you hit that like button. I would appreciate it. And I hope you do subscribe to my YouTube channel. <clears throat> if you do, make sure you hit the bell icon for notifications for any new videos I do. Also, feel free to share this video if you want to. And feel free to donate to my channel if you like. You could do it through Patreon or PayPal me. Links will be in the description of this video. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that will be soon. Until then, from Southern California, I wish you all a good day then. Bye!